Hello and welcome to section 4 of Mastering TypeScript. This section will be on interacting with the type system. In this section, we will look more in depth into type assertion and type guarding, then at multiple function signatures, advanced function use with REST parameters and the spread operator, extending built-in types, and finally code refactoring in TypeScript. Now we move on to the first video of this section, and it's on type assertion and type guarding. In this video, we are going to go through a simple example that demonstrates type assertion and type guarding. We're going to look at some new syntax for type assertion, and then we'll discuss when we should use type assertion and when we should use type guarding. Type assertion is a useful way of telling the compiler exactly what subtype of a type an object is. To fully understand this, let's look at a simple example that often causes some confusion. In this simple example outside our sample app, we have a text box and a button that says show alert. Let's make this example work by showing an alert with the text of the text box when we click the button. First, I'm going to wrap our code in a DOM content loaded function to ensure this code won't be executed until the document is completely ready. This is similar to the jQuery ready function and ensures our elements will be accessible once our code runs. Now let's get our elements from the DOM. First, we'll select our text box and then we'll select our button. Now we have to add a click event onto the button. Let's go ahead and do that. And finally, let's show an alert with the value of the text box. Aha! We finally come across our error. The compiler is telling us that the property value doesn't exist on the type HTML element. The problem here is that the type getElementById returns is an HTML element, but getElementById will return a subtype of HTML element depending on the element it gets. For example, if we select our div element, it will return an HTML div element, and if we select our input element, it will return an HTML input element. The compiler doesn't know what specific subtype the function should return, because it's only provided with a string. So how can we tell the compiler that our variable text input should be an HTML input element and not just an HTML element? Well, we can look at what we used in video 2.2 and use a type guard. To do that, we'd surround this statement in an if statement that checks if the type of the variable is an HTML input element. Our code works now because in order to get to this statement, the HTML element must be an instance of the subtype HTML input element, and so since this is proven to the compiler, it makes this variable the type of the subtype within the scope of this if statement. There's a bit of a problem with this though. Although it works, it was a bit much to write, and since we have the knowledge that text input will always be an HTML input element, this is a needless check. So isn't there a way we can somehow tell the compiler this variable will always be an HTML input element? How about using an explicit type? That might work. Doing that removes the error for text input not having a value property. But now we get a new error. Remember that getElementById returns an HTML element, which is the parent type of HTML input element. In this case, the compiler cannot prove that the type HTML element in the right-hand side of this expression will be an HTML input element, and so it throws an error. We can see by this that we need to tell the compiler that the right-hand side of our expression is an HTML input element, and that's where type assertion comes in. To do that, we just have to add the type surrounded in angle brackets to the beginning of the right-hand side of the statement. Now text input is typed as an HTML input element, and the compiler no longer complains. Although not necessary for our example, let's type our button element as an HTML button element, but we're going to do it slightly differently this time. In this case, we're going to use new recommended syntax introduced in TypeScript 1.6. To use it, add the as keyword to the end of the line, and then put the type you want to assert to. In the case of a button element, it's an HTML button element. This syntax is recommended from now on because it doesn't conflict with similar syntax used in TSX files. Now when should we use type assertion, and when should we use type guarding? 
A simple rule is to use type assertion when we know the type will be a specific subtype, and use a type guard when we don't know what the type will be. In this video, we have looked at type assertion and a bit more into type guarding. You now also know when to use a type assertion and when to use a type guard. In the next video, we're going to look into using type guarding a bit more by using user-defined type guarding.